Hi, welcome to this webinar, during which we will discuss how organizations can implement online crisis management strategies to manage and prevent crisis. We will start by discussing what can cause an online crisis. There are some things that we can anticipate and others that we can't. We will then move to how to prevent and manage an online crisis, followed by how to manage negative social media comments, which could be the result or one of the reasons of a social media crisis. So it's important to be prepared. After that, we will look into what are a few th tips to identify bots and fake accounts, how to draft replies to negative comments using the latte me method. And we will end with looking at a few listening and monitoring tools that are important to help you prevent crisis. Common mistakes can be behind a crisis. For example, spelling and grammar mistakes made by professional organizations or accidentally, for example, liking an inappropriate post, tweeting a personal message from a professional account or unintentionally making an offensive statement. Sometimes like a cultural or a statement taken out of context. More serious causes for a crisis can usually be intentional, such as someone sabotaging or hacking an employee's account or email. In that case, shifting responsibility on the person responsible can be one strategy, but digital security is usually your responsibility. You can also have your data stolen or some misinformation or fake news related to the organization or the individuals representing it. Another reason for an online crisis are catastrophic events, such as intentional racist comment or sexist comment made by organization or sometimes individuals who work at these organizations. There are also other events not directly related to the organization, but impacts, uh, for example, a crisis such as political action or war. These reasons can trigger negative comments that can escalate, but sometimes negative comments can also come for no reason that you could have possibly anticipated. Negative comments can escalate in intensity and importance if they go unanswered or unmoderated, because it opens the door to more negative comments from real people. It could also be a targeted campaign against the organization amplified by bots and fake accounts. It can also happen that negative comments online are triggered by events that happen in real life. This is why it's important to understand what is happening before addressing or answering a comment. So these are the major reasons that can cause an online crisis. As I mentioned before, there are some that can be prevented and others that will have to be managed to minimize its impact. First, every organization should have a crisis communication plan to manage and avoid potential problems. This should be a live working document that is updated periodically based on new information you learn or gather from your online communication. The crisis communication plan should include how you will communicate internally once you have a crisis, meaning who should be informed, who makes a decision on action, what is the chain of command, when do you need to involve the legal team, and so on. It should also clarify what constitutes a crisis so that the communication team is aware of that as well. It should also list clearly what's the approval process before any piece of online content is posted. You can also include a list of pre-approved messages that you can use and customize to, for example, respond to a negative comment. This is important to keep up to date as well as you uncover different additional types of negative comments on your social media platforms. It should also include a link to your social media policy for new employees so that they know that what they can and cannot do on their personal and professional accounts. The crisis communication plan should also include what potential threats you might have and place them within this uh, matrix that defines the likelihood of it happening and the consequences or impact on the organization. Accordingly, you can have an action plan and an escalation plan based on the risk matrix. Once you launch a campaign or any type you post on social media, it's important to monitor its impact. So don't post and disappear. 
It is true that a crisis can happen anytime, sometimes days or weeks after uh, you post something, but monitoring the initial reaction is important to spot a trend before it becomes one. Remember to address the negative comments immediately and design a framework to decide when to hide, block, or delete. We will cover how to do that in the upcoming section. One tool that is easy and helpful to know what is being said about your organization is to use Google Alerts or social media listening tools. Also knowing how to spot bots or fake accounts and taking action on this is important to maintain the credibility of your social media pages. When you decide to respond to comments online, it's extremely important to respond professionally. A rude or impulsive reply can do more damage than the original comment posted. You also don't want to be impulsive and delete the comment or block users automatically. This usually pushes people to get more outspoken and gather more support against you. And things can easily get out of control from there. When recruiting a social media uh, manager or communication team, it's important to choose the right person to manage your account. It might look like an easy job, but a great social media manager should be able to handle a crisis calmly, be well organized and be detailed oriented. You also don't want to have more than one person managing your social media accounts because it will not be clear whose responsibility it is to manage a crisis or a negative comment. Once you have that person on your team, make sure to discuss the crisis management plan or policy and be very clear on roles and responsibilities. Other than the crisis communication plan, the organization should also have a social media policy. So your employees' social media profiles reflect on your organization, especially when they are in the public eye. So this policy should clearly state what they can and cannot post and what. So once you've successfully managed the crisis, make sure to update your uh, crisis plan with an update on what started it, how can you prevent the same from happening again, what can you do better next time, and what did work for you this time. This way, when new uh, communication teams or employees join, they will have access to your crisis history as it is all well documented. So what is the best way to manage negative comments on social media platforms? First, it's important not to take it personally. You might have drafted the campaign or the press release or the content, but that doesn't mean that this comment is about you. This is exactly what the person commenting wants. Don't play their game and reply with facts and well-written arguments. Don't take rash decisions by deleting a comment or sending an angry message. Remember, you represent an organization, not yourself. If for one reason or another, you are not able to do so with a clear mind, have someone else reply from the team to help you distance yourself from the comment. Before you take any decision on the comment, make sure to take a screenshot. You will need it for reference for a few reasons. First, in case you decide to eventually delete the public comment, or if the person does it himself, you want to have it in your records. In case that person comments again, you can decide to block them because they violated your communication policies, and this way you have something to back, back it up in case he protests. But you will also need it to amend your crisis management plan with real examples and comments to plan a proper response for each, especially if these happen often. Finally, you also need it for reporting and to help address these issues in the future. After you, after you take that screenshot, it helps to check the profile of the person who commented to understand who the person is and in what capacity he, he or she is providing their comment. For example, if you want to know if he's an expert in his fields or just a person sharing personal thoughts or beliefs. You also want to check if the account is real or fake because before you decide how to act accordingly. Once you have all of this information and you have informed the relevant parties within your organization, you can decide what you want to do. If you decide to reply, start by thanking the person and or acknowledging their point of view and give solid and neutral information to help open a conversation. 
Your objective is not to convince them, but to help them think, read, or learn a different perspective on the issue at hand. We will go more in depth in that in the upcoming sections. Hiding a comment is also a possibility uh, depending on the platform you're using, like Facebook, for example, it allows you to hide the comment. And this is a good strategy if you don't intend to reply, but you don't want other people to do so as well. So when you hide the comment, only the person who posted it and their friends will see the comment. So they will not know that you hid it and no one outside their circle will be able to see it. Deleting a comment is a drastic decision and is usually reserved under two conditions. If the account is a bot or doesn't represent a real person, or if the comment was extremely offensive and used unacceptable words. You delete the comment and you can draft a message that explains why this comment and other comments like it will be deleted because, for example, it violates the rules of the organization or the community. And you post this comment and pin it to the top of the comment section for everyone to see it. Also, depending on which social media platforms you are using, you can choose to follow a comment or a series of comments that you decided to keep an eye on and get notified immediately when someone replies to the comment you are following so that you can assess when things get out of hand. Also having replies prepared can be very helpful to manage social media comments. You know your audience and you can already expect a certain type of comments. This helps the team respond quickly and it also decreases the emotional impact of these comments. Finally, there's always a positive side to a negative comment, even if it's hard to see. If you are working on advocacy or trying to raise awareness, awareness or educating your audience, Having negative comments, meaning you are reaching the right audience for this message. Some negative comments can come uh, from not knowing these facts, and these comments are a great way to open a conversation with people and build a relationship as well as more awareness. Through the conversation, you can share the facts and advocate for the cause with solid argument. Now, it is true we are talking about negative comments, but that doesn't mean that we ignore the positive comments. You want to engage them too and keep the conversation going. This will inform other readers, but it also help you build an image of an engaged organization. And it will also signal to the social media platform and the algorithm that this is an interesting post and it will automatically increase its organic reach. Last but not least, if you are running an advertising campaign and you are getting many negative comments, you might want to pause or stop the campaign to help control the flow of comments. You can definitely reactivate it or relaunch it after you get a handle of the comments on your platform. So this is an example of how your negative comments action plan can look like. It starts with a screenshot and then a decision is made whether to respond or not in a timely fashion. You can really post the video here to scan this in detail, but keep in mind this example is based on an actual business, but that doesn't mean that you should deal with negative comments any differently. So that brings us to how can you identify bots and fake accounts to better help you manage them on your pages. So in this section, we will go through a few easy steps that will help you identify the authenticity of an account. Of course, these are not foolproof guidelines, but it gives you a critical eye to spot bots and fake accounts. First sign of a bot is that it has a generic bio. It is highly fabricated or sometimes randomly generated. Once you analyze an account, ask yourself, does this read like it belongs to a real person? Does it have a profile picture? If yes, you can decide to do a reverse image search on the image used as the profile picture. If you find it any, everywhere, it's probably recycled. If there is no profile picture, that also increases its ch chances that it's a fake user. If the account, for example, doesn't have a lot of posts, it is an additional indication that it might be a bot or fake account. Why? because these are generated quickly, sometimes to just follow other accounts or comment on them. So they don't spend a lot of time trying to make them look real. Sometimes the account also has posts, 
but it's only to promote products or sharing, for example, suspicious giveaways and fake discounts on items. This is almost a sure indication that this is a fake account. You can go also go through their followers to check if they have random handles with numbers, for example, or if they don't have many comments on their pictures, or you can find the same people commenting on the same uh, uh, post every time. So followers with random handles, for example, in this, in this screenshot, 1635s or names that do not really make sense are usually an indication that the account in question is a fake account. It is also a good indication that, it, uh, that the account is fake if they are following a lot more accounts than the number of followers they have. In general, real accounts have almost as many followers as accounts they are following. So fake accounts usually go on random and intense uh, following sprees to keep their account engaged. And they end up having a lot more, uh, for, uh, they end up having following more, more accounts than they have followers. Fake accounts are also usually created quickly and in large numbers. So you can go to the account history to see how old the account is. And that is an additional indication to help you identify or make an educated decision. Fake accounts also have irrelevant or spam-like comments, similar to these comments in the example on the slide. You can also identify bots from their behaviors online. For example, they tweet every few minutes. No real person does that. Or for example, if they endorse polarizing political propaganda, or the, if they tweet, of, or if they constantly retweet other bots' accounts, and if they obtained a large number of followers count in a very small time duration. So now after you have identified an account as fake or a bot, you can delete the comment knowing that this will not likely escalate, but also to protect your image as an organization. You can also report or block the account depending on the platform you are using. Of course, sometimes reporting an account will not have any real impact, but still sometimes just knowing that the comment is from a bot, it takes away its power. So let's say you have decided to reply to a negative or at least a not so positive comment. One method you can use and remember uh, while drafting your, your reply is the latte method. This method was actually invented and implemented by Starbucks to improve their customer service and boost customer satisfaction. Even if it comes from a business and actually uh, become, because it comes from a business, all the more reason to use it in your organization. Businesses like Starbucks value their customers and you as an organization, you value your audience. So the Latte method starts with L, which is for listen. Of course, in that case, read the comment, not listen to the comment. But you want to start to understand basically who the person is and why he or she holds these beliefs. It could range from a lack of knowledge to having different beliefs due to different educational or religious backgrounds. Understanding this will help you draft a calm and balanced reply. After that, it's important to acknowledge if you made a mistake, like a typo or shared something uh, not correct, acknowledge that, but also acknowledge the fact that the person is allowed to have their own opinion on the matter. After that, you can take action in your comment, try to find a middle ground, discuss and keep the conversation open. If you made a mistake, take responsibility and learn from it. The second T from the latte method is really about thanking the person. So thank the person for highlighting the problem or for taking the time for sharing their point of view. Even if you don't agree with the comment, however, the person took the time and effort to write that comment. So thanking them is always a good idea. And end your reply by trying to keep the relationship going and encourage them to share their opinion again. Show them that you appreciate them. So that is an example of how actually Starbucks uses the latte method. I've added it here so it serves you as an inspiration, keeping in mind that this is of course different for them, but the method applies in any situation. 
That brings us to the last section, which is listening and monitoring tools. Of course, these are small, uh, a small sample of listening and monitoring tools because there are always new tools that are made available. So use this as a list, as a, use this list as a guideline and make your own research depending on your needs. Google Alerts is always a good tool to monitor what people are saying about your organization or public figures in it. So you can set it in a few seconds and decide the frequency of alerts you want to, you want to receive. You might also be using Hootsuite to schedule your posts, but you can also use it to monitor certain keywords to track what people are saying about your organization or what are the sentiment around your cause or topics. Brand Mention also allows you to rate your influence based on four categories. So the strength by the number of mentions you receive, the sentiment, whether positive or negative, the passion or how many times the same user mentions you and the reach, which is the number of unique users talking about you. And finally, Zoom Sphere is a publishing platform, but it also allows you to monitor your mentions across many social media platforms. This is it for this webinar. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.